how can you not make the same mistakes by understanding the mistakes you made? And I think that's what's revealing about my books is often we have these, wow, I thought I was doing the right thing and it sabotaged the relationship. We're doing our best to give our partners what we would want, not necessarily what they're needing most. Did you push record? Thanks for tuning back into Second Act TV. Today, we're continuing our conversation with the author of the best-selling, best-known relationship book of all times, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, Dr. John Gray. John, thank you so much for staying over. Well, thank you so much. Well, I I just had so much fun on our last segment, and uh, we will obviously link to that. Our focus there was the challenges that we go through after 50 in uh, a long-term marriage you know so many marriages are breaking up and and you gave some great uh, great insight into what really happens in long-term relationships and what we need to understand I want to change gears on this segment and go with all those people over 50 it's it's staggering also how many people over 50 are single and are starting over and are trying to find love again in the context of your well you have two books one Well, you have lots of books, (laughs) but the ones that we're referencing right now, Beyond Mars and Venus, which is keeping it together. And then you told me off camera, which I didn't know you had a book on starting over. So in that context, how do we start over after 50 and not make the same mistakes? Well, 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 that's the best thing is not make the same mistakes. How can you not make the same mistakes by understanding the mistakes you made? And I think that's what's revealing about my books is often we have these, wow, I thought I was doing the right thing. And it sabotaged the relationship because so much of the time we do put our best into a relationship. And when it doesn't work, then that sours us. And then we start pulling apart. But it's often we're doing our best to give our partners what we would want, not necessarily what they're needing most. So understanding our differences goes a long way. But now let's understand, let's focus on some of the differences between men and women and starting over. This is very revealing and helpful. Statistically, generally speaking, uh, women take nine years, if ever, to start to get married again or get in a serious relationship. Okay, so there's a, and men, three years. (laughs) Men are, there's a quick, now quick answer to that is that men uh, are more visual and uh, they're not dependent on someone doing something for them they just see it and want it when it comes to sex. And men are very much aware that they need sex uh, in order to feel alive. Women are not as aware that they need sex to feel alive. They need to feel love to feel alive. And then that love leads them to sex. So we all want sex, but quite often women have more requirements before they find the part of them that wants sex. Mm-hmm. I remember I used to say to my wife, let's have sex. And she said, oh, I'm not in the mood. And I would take it so personally. And then until I realized that women aren't necess- you have to help women get in the mood. So I would practice this for the men listening. I'd say, well, is there a part of you that wants to have sex with me? And she'd always say, well, sure, there's a part of me. Well, let's talk about that part of you. <laughs> so let's have a conversation about that. And ironically, then she would start talking about all the reasons she didn't want to have sex. But as she got to express what she felt without any impatience on my side, then what would happen is her estrogen levels go up and her desire for sex awakens. Mm -hmm. Women have to have higher estrogen levels than men to be in touch with their desire for sex. And we talked about that in the last segment, but quick review, women need more estrogen, men need more testosterone. Now what stimulates estrogen is depending on someone. And when a woman breaks up and starting over, now she depends on herself. Mm -hmm. She's used to whatever extent she could depend on her part, but now she's alone. And when you're alone, you make testosterone. When you're independent, you make testosterone and testosterone lowers estrogen. And a woman can't grow in trust and fall in love unless her estrogen levels double from 10 times a man's. Okay, so she's not gonna, you know, women tell me, I meet these wonderful men, they're nice, I feel like I should be in a relationship and nothing clicks, I can't fall in love. I I hear it all the time on comments, all the time. It's just like, it, it doesn't happen. And what it is, is that you're so used to being independent. Once you're independent, you're kind of caught in this bind. Whereas men, when they're independent, they thrive through that. Okay. So I hear women complaining, my husband, he was like a slob. And now he got, he's got haircut, he shaves, he gets new outfits. You know, he's working out in the gym. He lost 20 pounds. What happened? You know, just, he's got a girlfriend right away. Yeah, what yeah, am yeah. I, chopped liver or something? And that, that that in itself also hurts women because they don't understand that 
you know, men can feel sexual desire without saying, I love you deeply. We walk around feeling it all the time, particularly when we feel alone. Once we're in a connected relationship, our desire can become less. So here's this guy you're married to, and he's no longer having sex with you. And then boom, he separates. Now he's horny. What happened? He needed separation. And one of the mistakes she might have made in the relationship is not giving him that separation. See, it's just like she, see, what does it mean to not give a man separation? And men are from Mars. I talk about men are like rubber bands. They want to get close and then they pull away. Now, if when he gets close and he pulls away, you go after him, the rubber band never stretches, so he'll spring back. Is that men need to feel distance in order to feel desire. And when they feel desire, their testosterone goes up. So what happens, if a guy pulls away, here's what she can do. She can go try to please him and get him back. That's pursuing him. You don't pursue men. You let men pursue you. See, if you're going after them, it weakens their desire for you and they don't bond with you. So this is women who pursue men oh, after 50 because your testosterone levels are higher. You want a relationship. You pursue these men. They won't make a commitment. They don't bond with you. And <laughs> it's because they didn't pursue you. Now, there's another type of man, which we're just talking about, who's interested in you and pursues you, but it does nothing for you. OK, so basically your estrogen levels don't go up because you're too far on your male side. So how to fall in love again and, and how to be motivated. First of all, don't wait nine years to get involved. Start dating now. OK, right. If the, there are men who are interested in you and you're not turned on to them or that interested in them. They're nice. They're safe. Those are the guys you want to date. You say, yes. Oh, that would be so nice. You may feel nothing, no sexual desire, no attraction at all. They're safe. And maybe you feel a little respect or an admiration for what they've done in their life. Okay, that's you, you need a few requirements, but these these are the guys that are have you know they're good a good job or they worked hard, they're somewhat decent, you know, civilized, they made some money, and they're interested in you. Mm -hmm. Say yes. Now what you do is you practice these skills that we'll talk a little bit about, but are in the Beyond Mars and Venus book. The skills are don't pursue a man more than he pursues you. Don't people please. So what that means is every date, the conversation is expressing a different point of view from him. Don't try to please him and agree with him. You have to experience being an authentic person because why did your marriage fail before? Because you gave so much of yourself, you adapted for your partner, you gave, you need to experience that I am lovable without doing anything. I am lovable adjusting myself but I'm also lovable because I don't inappropriately express myself. So this is part of what women also go into, which is I'm tired of having to be a doormat or conform for a man. I'm gonna say what I think and what I feel. Yeah, do that. As long as you're not trying to convince him, as long as you're not trying to change him, as long as you're not arguing with him, you can very happily, see that's where the tension comes. Instead of, you can't just dump whatever you think and feel unless you do it in a nice way which is, that's a good idea. I can see your point on that. I have a completely different point of view. And say your point of view with no attachment or dependence on him agreeing with you. That's the most attractive thing. And it also makes you happy. You get to be yourself, but there's an art to being yourself without trying to change someone. The flip side of this is authenticity, is revealing what you think, but also what you feel. Now, revealing what you feel is a major estrogen stimulator. Okay, you can measure a woman's estrogen levels before she comes to a counseling session with me and they'll shoot up. Tears will come to her eyes because anytime a woman is stressed, there's tears under it. Yeah. There's vulnerability. There's, there's disappointments. There's sadness. There's concerns. There's fears. And often over 50, naturally, your estrogen levels have been beaten down by an unsuccessful relationship. So it's even hard to feel those or articulate those feelings. So in a relationship, what you need to do is as it becomes a little bit more intimate, you first had events where you let him do things for you. You're the independent woman. You don't need somebody to open the car door for you. You can do it yourself, right? Big girl. Yeah. No, no. no. you stand by the car door and just stand there. And he said, like, what, you want me to open the door? I said, of course, you know, I'm a little old fashioned. It feels good to me. When you're not around, I can certainly open the car door. <laughs> I can certainly do it for you. I, I like to have you do that for me. State your ground. That's what romance is. But first understand, the whole point of romance is when a man does little things for you so that you don't have to do it, it produces estrogen. Now, I remember with Bonnie, I would open the car door, my wife, Bonnie, opened the car door for her. 
you know, she said, I can do that myself. I said, no, no, let me do it. You do so much for so many people. And for me tonight, let me just take care of you. I love you. See what a difference that is? It's not like I'm weak and I need you to do it like that. I need you to do it to feel good, to get my estrogen back up, to come back to my female side where I can feel that other people are doing things for me rather than I'm doing everything for them. Yeah, that's that's such a great point. I got so many, so much of that you can't help but have it, you know, internalize what you say, because <laughs> that that was me too. The you know, a, a lot of times on on the dating videos that we do, uh, what comes up a lot. I'm, I'm interested what your take on that might be. Uh, you know, the like who pays for the first date, and and it's really not about the money. It's about the really the gesture, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. If a man invites you to dinner. He pays. If you invite him to dinner or we get together, go somewhere cheap and split the bill. Okay. <laughs> and, and then if he offers, take it. Okay. But but don't just offer to do it. Never offer to do it. Basically, the bill goes there and let it sit there for a while. Then go use the restroom and come back and see if it's been paid. <laughs> if it hasn't been paid, then say, oh, are you want to... Oh, are you wanting to share the bill? And you have to realize it maybe he's not cheap, but he's afraid of offending you. Some women will be offended if a man wants to pay the bill. You know, we're walking on like thin ice all the time now. We don't know where you're coming from. And so th there's a graciousness to that, which is just let it sit there until he grabs it. And when he grabs it, go, oh, how nice of you. How, oh, that's nice. I really appreciate that. You know, I'm kind of old fashioned. I really like that. Yes. See, you, you, it's a soft touch. It's a soft touch, it, giving him subtle messages of where you come from. It, it won't be offensive to you. And two, it feels good to you. Men don't realize how intimacy grows, nor do women. It's when a man does something for you. Mm -hmm. That's how your estrogen levels go up. It's not you doing things for him. If you're doing things for him, it's not you're now the man. You don't want to pursue the man. Now you get to some of these men are just... Oh, they're insecure. You know, nobody's perfect. Right. And so they don't pursue you. So you are interested in a guy because I said don't pursue men, but you are interested in a guy. You can pursue by being what's what I call in my dating book. I have a book called Mars Venus on a date. So when you're in the oh, dating process, we'll link to that too. tips. OK, so but it's called proceptivity. Proceptivity is letting him know you, you're asserting yourself, letting him know in certain ways that you're receptive to him, that if he was to ask you on a date, you'd say yes. If you want to kiss me, I'm open to that. Okay, so <laughs> you should do that. You know, it used to be enough at the, at, at, you know, you meet some guy, nice date, and you sort of look towards him and look up at him like that. And that means if you kiss me, it's okay. But guys will go, why is she staring at me? <laughs> <laughs> so you, know, so you, you, you have to kind of let him know, give him little tips, you know, and if he kisses me, it's okay. You know, I like that. Just something like that. So I just funny. move a little closer and a little closer, a little closer. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get the message. You have to realize we're so, sort of, you know, just on the other extreme, we're like these bad guys now, you know, and it, it's, we're afraid. We're afraid of doing the wrong thing or touching or saying the wrong thing. And of course, then there's some men that aren't. They're so old-fashioned that, that, that what you do then is you laugh at them. Well, that's kind of old-fashioned. Well, that's kind of ridiculous. I, you, and 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 what you need to know is that when you're when you're in the dating situation and you're a woman, this is how attraction grows in a healthy way. First, in your mind, you find him safe. You find him interesting. He has good character qualifications, and one of them is he makes a living. He's not dependent on you for money. That's really very important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the absolute important, but you know maybe he's this super talented artist and just doesn't know how to make money. And you happen to be an heiress to a great fortune. You could you could have a great relationship with him as long as you used him, certainly not for money, mm -hmm. but you used him for emotional fulfillment. Sure. So yeah, and that's where this whole key I'm talking about intimacy is getting men to do things for you, and then getting in touch if you're on your male side. More important is not him doing things for you or providing things for you. It's going to be a kind of emotional support. Mm -hmm. And that's the soulmate thing we're all looking for is where you can feel I can bear my soul. And one is I can express my opinion safely. Then I can ask for what I want and get it, practice asking for things. And then I can reveal more intimately 
the kind of emotions inside that I wouldn't tell anybody about. Okay, that that's real intimacy. Yeah. You see, you know, that's the pre prelude to sex. See, sex is is showing your body that you don't show to everybody else. Generally speaking, women wear clothes and they hide from they're hiding, you know. Basically, I'm afraid of anybody judging me or not seeing me as beautiful. But I trust you, so I'm gonna get naked with you. Well, before if you want as you get older, maybe you don't want to be so naked, but <laughs> but you want to be emotionally naked. That's what keeps the passion alive. And I'll just throw in, since I, I got to that point about our bodies as we get older, well, we know women feel less and less attractive on many levels because they don't look like those young 24 year olds they did they used to be. The skin's so smooth, the body's so supple and all those things. What you have to understand is men, if you're the only naked woman in the room, to him, you're a million bucks. We don't have the judgments of you. As soon as we get turned on, we don't judge your body in any way, particularly if we love you. The, the, the sex desire makes you into a goddess. You, you, you just can't imagine. You can't even ever imagine how amazing it is. Just like I could not imagine. You know, you see, you see in Hollywood, or you just see around the world sometimes in, in New York and where you get these rich men and they're overweight and yet women love them. <laughs> it's the power. Okay, yeah. power is an aphrodisiac. And what is the power? It means she's safe. Right. And a woman feels safe in the presence of a man, then suddenly her estrogen levels go, I'm safe, and estrogen goes up. I can depend on him to protect me. It's a very deep, deep thing. So you could care less how good he looks. And as a matter of fact, these pretty boys, often women aren't turned on to them. It's competition. <laughs> it's too much, too much competition. He's looking at himself. I want him looking at me. Well, what you have to know is that when you're the, just your body, your femininity, your love to man, if you're the only woman in the room. Now, outside that room, he may be looking at other women all the time, but he's not thinking, I want to marry them. He's not thinking, I want to be in a relationship with them. And when he has you naked, he doesn't think about those other women. And if he does, they pass through. But it's literally, you are it. And you can't imagine that. You just have to believe it. And I'll tell you the funny story where I learned this. I was shopping for my wife at Victoria's Secret and asked the person to the counter, tell me any funny stories you've heard. And she says, this is the short version. Three overweight 65 to 75 year old women come in doing, two of them doing their functional white underwear. <laughs> they goes way up and big, big bra. And then the other one is we're buying negligees and sexy underwear and lace and all that. And the other two women look at her with disgust. And say, what are, you, what are you putting that on? You're old, you're fat, you're not sexy. What do you think you're doing? And the woman with confidence says, you don't understand men. When you're the only naked woman in the room, to him, you have a million bucks. Just remember that. Because you need to, to be attractive, you have to have confidence that I deserve to be loved. So you turn the lights down, you put on some sexy clothes, and you slowly take them off. And then let it be a gradual thing so that you feel he's enough to get aroused. He has to have his erection and then you're a goddess. But it takes time for that to happen. Okay. So many women are gonna just absolutely love hearing what you just said. Because that is, that is so huge, you know, and I get it on this channel, of course, all the time through the comments and some of the programming we do, is the, the lack of confidence, a loss of confidence. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's sad. It's very sad. Uh, we're, we're starting to come, again, I want to be really respectful of your time. I could talk to you forever. <laughs> There's so many other topics I'd love to explore with you. Uh, but getting back out there, I want to uh, go back to one thing that you said about uh, women not pursuing men. But is that true? Like, how else on dating sites? Are you saying women not make the first move? Or are you just saying once a relationship, once you start not to? Well, the nice thing about dating sites is you can be perceptive by sending a message to a guy. That's all, just a short message. And so it's free. If you're in a, if you're in a public situation, uh, what you do is you have a card and you say, call me. Give him the choice to call him. Now that you're afraid, well, what if he doesn't call you? Well, he's just not into you. Yeah, then he's but not you into wanna, you. You basically, that's your first move. And he says, call you. No, that's you making a move towards him. So if he says, here's my number, call me. You say, no, here's my number. You call me. Okay. You don't call him. He calls you. And to know that men will do this. They will get close to you and have a wonderful evening with you. And then they don't think about you for several weeks. And you'll take that personally because you're thinking, did he like me? Did he not like me? What's going on? Because you tend to bond more. He bonded. And then when men bond, they're rubber bands. They have to pull away. Okay. So then when he pulls away, while he's away, if you say, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you call me and slap his hand for that? He keeps pulling away. 
And a lot of men, once two weeks pass, they're kind of like, oh my gosh, if I call her, she's going to be pissed off at me for not calling back. Because women often are like, well, what am I, zero? You didn't want to call me? You didn't talk to me again? So, and often they'll say right after a date, they'll say, oh, I can't wait to talk to you again. Because <laughs> they feel you wanting to hear that. But then they, they need their time, the space to notice, to think about you, reflect on you. And that will eventually happen once his testosterone comes back up. It's already happening for you. A day, the next day later, what do you think about that? And usually it creates more of a longing inside of you when he pulls away at that point. And he's not feeling that longing until his testosterone comes back up. He calls you up and you slap his hand. He's had that happen, so he doesn't call you back. So here's what you do. You send a wait a week and then you send a little note, just a little note, a little text, just say, hey, thinking about you, I was just at such, such and such zone show. We had so much fun. That was it. Just thinking about you. That's all. And then show a picture of you having fun. And he remembers, oh, this is a woman who has fun. This is a woman who's happy. I need a happy woman in my life because men are drawn to wanting to make women happier. That's our goal in life. Our goal in life, whether we know it or not, is to make women happy, but actually it's to make her happier because you can't make a woman happy. You can only make her feel bad if you don't know how to allow her to find her happiness. One dating tip, I know our time's coming to and I want to rush it, squeeze it in here. When you date, this is my basic thing, I say it over and over, create a series of positive dating experiences without looking for a soulmate, without looking for the right man. It's very important. If you come to my house, for example, you'll see it's beautiful and I'll, sh I'll give you a tour of all the art and everything. Okay, great. But if you come to my house and you wanna buy it, you're gonna look for the faucets work, does the, what's the gas bill, what's the water bill, What's it take to maintain the garden? Does it have mold in it? Are there cracks in the foundation? Your brain goes into a bias of focusing on negativity when you're looking to buy something. Just know you can't so help true. it. So don't yeah. go looking for the right man. You wanna, have, you wanna go for somebody who's gonna pay for dinner for you. <laughs> you wanna, if I'm talking to women and men, you wanna just, you have an attraction towards a woman, get to enjoy her presence when you're doing things for her. There's nothing better for men's testosterone to do something for a woman and have her say, what a delight to be with you. I'm yeah. so lucky to have met you. Or, oh, that's so nice of you. Oh, thank you so much. You know, it's feeling that you make a difference and women can do that in a huge way for a man. But this, the thing is he needs to have a job. He needs to keep working. He needs to have, even if it's charity work, if he's got plenty of money, what is he doing to feel good, not dependent on my wife? Otherwise, you're sitting around depending on each other for too much. Right. It goes dead. Right. Well, in, in that regard, and to close it out, how would you advise men on that, though? Because you might be surprised. <laughs> While this channel is supposed, oh, was originally programmed for women, we have almost a 70% male audience. Okay, fantastic. All right, so here, here's how it goes. And that's men having more estrogen. They're more relationship-oriented. Okay, so... Here's a game you can play. This is for both women and men, okay? It's a game you can play for um, balancing your hormones. You need to get your testosterone levels up, men. You need your cave time. You need to get away from her, do things with other guys. Literally go out of the house, go play golf, uh, you know, go drive your car. Driving your car is a really good thing, uh, particularly if you don't have to talk while you're doing it. Uh, have a hobby, your hobbies that are not dependent on your wife's approval to feel good in any way. Then you'll miss your wife more. It'll bring your testosterone up. Then go play this game. So the game is called the genie in the bottle. The genie in the bottle is for 20 minutes, you're the genie. Now, genies are all powerful. Just think the guy who stands there like Mr. Clean. I can do anything for you. you as you wish, I will provide anything you want. So for 20 minutes, she's not allowed to do anything for herself. If she wants to eat, you have to feed her. And, she, and you don't feed her unless she asks you, pick up your broccoli. I like some broccoli now or clean up the kitchen, would you move the dishes here? Would you move that box over here? We're gonna go in the garage, we'll clean off that shelf. Would you move that here? Would You have to, for 20 minutes, a man can be, I am your genie. I'm like, you know, I think of myself when I play it, I'm kind of like the first class attendant. You know, when I get in first class in an airplane, oh, Mr. Gray, you're here, Dr. Gray. So nice to have you back. What would you like? I'm here for you the whole time. Just give me a little call. You guys, I don't need anything, but still, they're, they're so gracious, right? So that's who you are. You're the genie in the bottle. She has to rub the bottle, which means she has to ask for help. Everything is she has to ask for help. She can't do anything for herself for 20 minutes. Now, you don't ask for help like, and always remember to turn the lights out or always remember to do this. That's outside the 20-minute limit. 
So, and, and when I teach this, I'm teaching it to women, but also I'm teaching it to men. And often sometimes people say, well, what's a good exercise for men? I say, that is the exercise for men. Men want to feel successful in a relationship. And it's her delight and it's her joy when he does these little things for her, as opposed to our conditioning is we have to do big things and not little things. Little things is nothing. It's it's change. I throw my change away. What do I need a little change for? Mm -hmm. Women need the little change, the things you did when you were poor, the things you did when you were beginning the relationship. Those are the things that actually stimulate estrogen the most. So for the men to understand, this is core basic foundation understanding. For women to be happy, they need estrogen. If a woman has low estrogen, you can give her 50 roses or one rose and it'll have no effect. Okay, if she has normal estrogen, you give her 50 roses, her estrogen will spike and she'll go, oh, that's so nice. If she has normal estrogen, give her one rose and it will spike the same. same. Mm -hmm. So big or little, you'll get a big estrogen response. If you have no estrogen in her, then you do, you have to slowly build it up by doing more things. If you do 50 roses, you get a little spike. If you do one rose, you get a little spike. So do one rose, one hug, one compliment, one noticing her, one affection, <laughs> one plan a day, one call her during the day, one send her a text, one send her a picture, one take a picture. Taking a picture is a big thing too. Or oh, I want to remember this moment, click, click, click. You know, all of these things <laughs> build her estrogen where she goes, I'm being seen, I'm being heard, I'm being supported. Ask her about a day when she talks, don't talk. When she talks, say something like, Help me understand that better. That's a million dollar <laughs> phrase. Help me understand that better. And then what else? Really? Tell me more. Every time she changes the subject, estrogen's going higher and higher and higher. And you had no idea. A man thinks, oh, I did this big thing. It should be worth three weeks of estrogen. No, it's just one little point. <laughs> Do lots of little things. And this is, and it's not the big stuff. It's the little stuff. And then go to your cave. You still get your cave time. But let her know that when you're in your cave, if ever she needs help, she can interrupt you. If you need, and women should know that. And if he's staying too long in the cave, how do you get him out of the cave? As the women say, how do I get him out of the cave? Don't let him just sit in there. Let him sit in there. Because once he's happy, he doesn't move. Okay, men would just say, this feels good. I'll just stay here. <laughs> so you say, when you're out of your cave or when you're not doing anything or when you get a chance, no pressure, when you get a chance, I need your help. The magic phrase, every man deep inside wants to be a helper. And if he doesn't, it's because he's never gotten paid well. That's, I love it. I love it. John, I, I, again, I could talk to you forever. <laughs> I know you've got other people lined up here after me. <laughs> it was an absolute delight. I'm, we're obviously going to uh, link to all your books, uh, especially the uh, Beyond Mars and Venus, which you've updated since, uh, you know, the iconic release of uh, Men Are From Men Mars, Mars. Uh, Women Are From Venus. And I hope that uh, I'll have another chance to get you back on here because there's a couple of things that I was I want to talk to you about some more. <laughs> so, well, the, the first thing you said, I want to remind everybody, if you don't want to repeat the same pattern, you have to recognize how you contributed to the problems because it's so easy to say, well, he's the problem or she's the problem. And that's why I ended the relationship. No, it's both of us were the problem. Then you have a chance to start making a new kind of relationship. Great. Well, and on that note, John, thank you so much. And I hope to see you again soon on Second Act TV. Bye. If there's a topic that you'd like to have us cover, please visit our website, secondact.tv. We have a little red suggestion box on the upper right-hand corner of our site. Just click on that, drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.